A bizarre day at the state capitol during day seven of Ken Paxton's impeachment trial. So it started when Paxton's mistress was called to testify, but right before her testimony, things changed. She left, and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who is acting as judge, said she was no longer available to testify. Then the lead impeachment prosecutor made a mistake, one that Paxton's attorneys jumped on in an effort to get the whole trial thrown out. Fox Force Peyton Yeager breaks it down during the tail end of the testimony today. She's in studio, Peyton. Steve, due to a technical issue this morning, we essentially had to wait all day on day seven of the trial to see if Paxson's mistress, Laura Olson, would take the stand. We know she was present at the state capitol and has never spoken publicly before. However, just before 5 p.m., she was deemed unavailable to testify. Late Wednesday, the highly anticipated testimony from Laura Olson, the mistress of suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, was called off at the last minute. Olson, pictured here with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick back in 2018, was seen at the state capitol Wednesday. But Lieutenant Governor Patrick, who was overseeing the trial in the Senate, made a surprising announcement. Members, uh, for the record, the House Board of Managers called Laura Olson. She is present, but has been deemed unavailable to testify. Uh, as soon as we get the witness in, we can continue. In the live stream, you could hear a few rumblings from the audience in confusion. The lieutenant governor repeated himself. I said the House Board of Managers called Laura Olson. She is present but not, but has been deemed unavailable to testify. Olson pictured with State Senator Donna Campbell on a Bear County GOP Facebook page in 2018 used to work for Senator Campbell. Evidence submitted by House managers allege Paxton misused his office to help his friend, Austin businessman and donor Nate Paul, who was under investigation by the FBI and has been charged with eight felony counts. The evidence suggests Paul hired Olson at his business, making it more convenient for Paxton to be close to her. But Patrick repeated a third time, Olson would not testify after all. The statement has been made by the court. It says what it means. Both sides have agreed to that statement. Both statements have agreed to that statement. According to media reports, Olson allegedly planned to plead the fifth during her testimony, so both sides agreed to move on. We spoke to constitutional lawyer David Cole moments after the Olson decision. She'd been summoned to come. The issue of whether or not she could be made to testify and assert the fifth was still in play. The last bit of argument about that took place today, and the Senate made its decision during the course of the day, and that led to the statement about availability. I don't think they would have called her down there if they knew you know, that there just was going to be a no-go at the end of the day. Cole says without Olson's testimony, it hurts the House managers. Well, only two people know the truth there, and Ms. Olson and Mr. Paxton, neither one of them is going to be testifying now. So there's kind of a gap in that part of the story that the House managers uh, previewed for us in the opening. We just don't know the why now. Shortly after, the House impeachment managers rested their case. However, House lawyer Rusty Hardin admitted he accidentally rested too early before Paxson's team could cross-examine one of the whistleblowers in the case. The court is having to put up with a screw-up by me. I apologize, but I would very respectfully like for him to go and do his cross. I don't have to do a cross. He rested. I will recall this witness. This back and forth caused Paxson's defense attorney, Tony Busby, to file a motion for a directed verdict, arguing there is insufficient evidence in the case against Ken Paxton. Ultimately, this would have ended the trial early. At the same time, House managers were proposing a rule change, adding that Paxton be banned from running for office again in the state if he is convicted. But after a debate behind closed doors, both sides decided to withdraw their motions and the trial would continue. So after both motions were withdrawn, Paxson's defense team was set to call the next witness. However, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick decided to adjourn and we will pick up where we left off tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.